what's missing curfew. It's when you kind of play guilty, but you show up. How nice is a green light on the road, though? No practice tomorrow, no playing, just go. Scotty Upshaw in the clear, and he scores! One in front, scores! A few laughs, a little bit of fun, and obviously a lot of hockey talk. You're listening to Missing Curfew. With our lads. Up, dog, my man. Fella Friday, my favorite day of the week. It sure is. The day before the weekend. Fella Friday, a little golf day. Buddy, it's nice to be in here at the studio with you. Things are good. Got a great guest today. Fella Fridays. Yeah, Brian Burrard is our guest. Uh, B was in town, never saw the studio. He said, hey, I want to come in and check the studio out. I said, fuck that. You're going to come in. Let's talk. Let's catch up. I mean, listen, Brian Burrard, his story is unbelievable. We all know it. Um, great guy, uh, knows a lot about hockey, working with young kids nowadays, really has a, really has a sense for these up and coming kids, what, what it takes to develop them nowadays, what they put into it, how much skill and teaching goes into it. So it's a great interview and uh, it was good to have him in town. I'm glad he doesn't come here a lot though, because fuck, do we take her deep ups? Do we <laughs> take her deep fella? No, it's a treat, buddy. Brian Burrard, listen, I never got a chance to play with B, but in uh, Philly, he was there on his last NHL, uh, the year he, he tried out with us before he went to Russia. Um, he meant so much to the USA and, you know, USA hockey coming through, first overall pick, uh, played, you know, under the likes of a guy like Brian Leach, um, but changed the way that the game was played. He was an offensive D-man, played with his heart on his sleeve, uh, you know, came back from an incredible, like, you know, most insane injury, one of the most insane injuries in the NHL history to, uh, you know, to, to still play and to still be effective. And, you know, he's one of our great buddies. And now he's given back from all the things he's learned in the game and all the things he's done as a pro, he's given back to these kids now. So it's great to see. And uh, what better, you know, what better guy to have on our, our new Frella Friday show? I, I was watching that game. I was a junior. I believe I was playing for the St. Michael's Majors at the time. Hosa just turned around, out of control, tried to one-time it, and just, boom, got Berard right in the eye. It was just, I remember watching it being like, oh, no. And then, obviously, um, you know, what happened after that and him coming back. So, uh, yeah, we love Berard. But before we get to Berard, let's go DraftKings, baby. Presented by DraftKings. Stay tuned because you'll hear more about DraftKings and all it has to offer throughout the show. DraftKings, the crowd is yours, fellas. Up, dog. Top titty. Listen, I'm I'm just brutal. Ups. I mean, I I don't matter what I what, whatever I throw in the blender, it's not mixing into a nice smoothie. It's mixed into not great. I was 36. The captain Brento 82nd. Princey had a hell of a showing, 111 points. By the way, Princey is expecting his third child. Everyone, so uh, he's in Calgary right now, working hard for us. Uh, his beautiful wife is uh, expecting any day. So Princey, um, we're thinking of you, buddy. Good luck with all that. Way to represent the uh, the boys in the top titty. And shout out to the winner, T. Kirby, 1518, 116 points. He had Samson off, who's been absolutely kicking up, dog. And he had Kempe, who's got some of the sickest style in the NHL. Get in there. Not many regular season games left. A thousand American dollars. First prize gets a buttery tea and a hat. Um, listen, I'm just not good enough in top titty ups. I don't know. I got back to the drawing board again. It's not perfect, buddy. It's it's one thing trying to even get it in Fridays, but it's another <laughs> thing trying to put together a winning winning squad. It's yeah. not easy. And when Brento finishes eighty second, there must have been some sort of glitch in the system. Twenty four, twenty fourth, he was. He had eighty two points. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, twenty four, okay, eighty two points. That's what more like my my boy. Um, he's usually listen, top ten. He's usually top ten, but Princey slid in there for him. A good replacement for the weekend. But yeah, shout out to Princey. Um, you know, good luck with all that. But uh, hopefully by you know, maybe the end of this show when people are listening, we might have a new uh, new member of Missing Curfew with us. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Good for him. DraftKings, lock of the night, fella. Up dog, we both won one. Listen, I had the avalanche last week over the Preds. Preds came out, made it 3 nothing right away. I went, oh, no, here we go. And then the Avs just, just, I mean, they're a comeback machine. I don't think they want to do that come playoff time, but they won for me. The Oilers beat the Ducks in a minus 6-10 line for you, so thank you for that. I am 13 and 7. Updog is 12 and 6. We are making you money here on our DraftKings lock of the night. Updog, go ahead, fella. Fire away. I shouldn't reach back into my magic bucket here trying to find wins for this team because they cost me last week. But the St. Louis Blues 
They need to rack up these points this weekend on this road trip. They got the San Jose Sharks in San Jose Saturday afternoon. It's a Bennington Blackwood faceoff. Um, listen, those points are crucial. It's do or die for the St. Louis Blues. So boys, get out there, find a dirty road win, and then get out, get out to Orange County after the game. I'm going to see some of the boys. But that is my Saturday lock of the week, Hobbs. I like that. That's a good angle, right? They laid an egg at home against the Sharks. You got to think, listen, they're going to, you know, a lot of pride in that dressing room. That's a good bet up, dog. I think they're going to come out and take care of business at the Shark Tank that doesn't quite have as much bite as it used to. Uh, together, we are 25-13. and 13, So I hope you've been riding this all year because you're making some dough here on the fellas. And listen, I'm going to go Battle of Alberta. I'm going to take the Edmonton Oilers. They'll probably be like minus 250. Going into the Saddle Dome, sorry, Weegsy baby, Connor McDavid and the Oilers to beat the Flames. And the Uck Dog's got his former Blues team heading into the Shark Tank to take on the San Jose Sharks. Ups. I like those bets, fella. I like those bets. You know what else I like, Up Dog? I like Jagermeister. Presented by Jagermeister. Best served at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Damn, that's cold. Check Jagermeister out at www.draftkingsjagermeister.com. Up dog, we got the Jagermeister thing in the studio now. If you're looking for a quick shot, buddy, damn, that's oh, cold. It comes fella. out icy, damn, too, baby. Comes out icy. It comes out icy cold. Listen, the Jagermeister iciest shot of the night, um, fellas. Owen Zellweger, up dog, a kid that you know from Cantaloupe's, scored his first NHL goal the other night. Coming down short side, I had the Canucks in the game too. It was two nothing Canucks. Everything was going fine. I was just sitting on the couch enjoying my evening. Owen Zellweger comes down, short side, over the short side titty, under the bar, first NHL goal. That is our Jagermeister, iciest shot of the night, up dog. You got to love it, too. In Vancouver, a good Western leaguer. He played for the Camelos Blazers last year in the Mem Cup. Um, you yeah, know, what a treat. What a treat for him. So congrats. It's always a, it's always a, uh, such an uplifting moment for a young kid that we're familiar with to come out and get his first and uh, I think this kid, although he's tiny, he moves well. And this goal was just one, you know, snippet of just how good this kid could be when he gets the puck in the ozone. So congrats on that. And then big fella, last but not least, Sidney Crosby scores this goal. I mean, it is a tip from the front. And he's got to have 100 of these in his career. So this, you know, he's, he, he steps out. He breaks himself away. You're a D-man. Sidney Crosby separates himself by coming to the puck. Not many, many guys open up and come away from the puck. Sidney Crosby separates himself, steps out in the high slot, tips it up over Shesterkin's, you know, blocker side. And, uh, I mean, for that, he deserves the Jagermeister iciest shot of the night. Damn, that's cold. Yeah, up dog. It's hard as a defenseman to get out to that high, high tip area, and nobody does it better than Sid. So that was juicy as well. But listen, if you're looking at these Jagermeister machines here they got here, like they keep them cold. You just take a shot like that. I'm telling you, for playoff time, up dog, they'll be nice to have around the house. So, fellas, I'd get one, that, and it just comes out ice cold up. So, um, Jagermeister, icy shot of the night. Crosby, Owen Zellweger, congratulations, up dog. We got our boy Brian Berard coming at you next on Missing Curfew. <laughs> fellas, in studio, the beast, Brian Berard. First of all, welcome back to Newport, fella. Second of all, as you would say, I'm still fucking hurting. I'm still fucking hurting. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. It got away on us there, didn't it? <laughs> it, 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 by quick too but finally back finally in the studio you guys yeah be here, boys. no that's, thank you that's what happens at a, a friday night where you get the og crew joe demarco pico Stu, pj and we were missing the loop dog but i mean yeah but that just happens fridays will <laughs> yeah, from golf from us playing golf to meeting those cats it's just inevitable i'd say get away from oops for sure yeah, listen, I I, I, I set out though. I set out it was like, the, like like the bat signal. I said, "Boys, Brard's coming in town. Um, anybody interested in dinner?" And, and all the boys came out of the woodworks. And by the way, we talked about this over the weekend, but um, that doesn't happen a lot. So thank you because I haven't seen Joe DeMarco. I mean, he's he's up to baby shit up to here. He doesn't leave the house, so it was good to see him. Stu, Steph, um, PJ. It was it was a great crew. It was it was great, and it's it's been too long since I've been there. It's been at least I think four or five years, definitely. Before. Yeah, we were talking about uh, you were a staple. You were a staple at the uh, Memorial Day slash July Fourth Lupo parties back in the day. You didn't you didn't miss one. I mean, you were you were coming in Memorial Day, and then you were right back out here for the fourth. Those were some good shakers back I in the day. I think even Labor Day we threw. 
after one because it was like yeah, white, black, uh, black shindig back. We had the white party, the even a black club party. Uh, that was called Sutra. Sutra. Yeah, yeah that's uh, yeah. It was definitely out a few times this summer. I, I miss Newport. It's, it's a good spot. Yes, uh, basically the same crowd doing the same shit, just a few more gray hairs and a little more LBs on. The- <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Happy I still have my hair. I, yeah, I was just going to say, I got your picture pulled up here on Hockey DB. You got the you got the flow hawk going there, but you still got the nice flow going. A little bit. It's all natural too. Yeah. It's uh, you know I didn't, I didn't fight a turkey yet to get to get the, <laughs> yeah, to get, to get the uh, hair done yet. Yeah, I, I was boys. I was thinking about maybe flying a turkey and getting that done, but I don't know. I got this new product <laughs> called Happy Head that gets me back in the game a little bit. Uh, if you go to Turkey, I'll go with you. All right. Yeah, we, you know, I, we probably won't get our hair done. We'll probably fucking yeah. do a few other things over there. What are they doing yeah. in Turkey? Though that's where the guys are going. Is it hair plugs or what is yeah, it? Is trans- it plugs? Full transplant. Full transplant. Yeah. I think Zach Johnson. Yeah. I watched that fucking yeah. full swing the other day. It's pretty good too, to be honest with you. Yeah, most guys. But you get a bandage on your head for a while, or you, you get fly back. To the you ever seen those pictures on the social media? You can see the guys <laughs> on the plane just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full bandages. That'd be a tough flight back in the bus there, eh? Like 37D, you're like, hey, sorry, boys, got the hair yeah. done. Like, look out here, fella. Grab yourself a gyro while you're over there, boys. <laughs> Maybe tour the pyramids, fuck, and get some new hair. Oh, that's funny. That's You've been great. to Turkey, though. Turkey's great, yeah. yeah. Istanbul and then a little island called Bodrum. Sick. It's like a little Mykonos place. It's bad. I know back when I played in Russia, a lot of guys, a lot of guys would sneak over. Russia, tons Russia, of Russians in Bodrum. Yeah. They, they go, it's where all their boats go, and, and yeah. it's where that little salt bay the is that where that guy came from? I think so, yeah, exactly. That's where he is, yeah. Didn't you have a good old-fashioned Turkish standoff with some guy over some fucking blankets or something back in the day? Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I played hardball. And then he eventually... You got, wish you had those yeah, towels now? Or? The Turks are hard, hard to negotiate with. How far apart were you on the... Uh, you know, was, it, was it? Could it, Could the deal got done? Or what, what was yeah, the, no, <laughs> I was standing still. So we went into this huge market. It's the biggest market in the world. And, um, you know, there's everything from fucking candles to magic carpets to to towels and the turkish the, are known the brothels. for these Don't forget the, the brothels. nice the nice cloth <laughs> the towels like right so they're towels and at the time i was building my house on 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 the island yep. and i knew the style right because i've been through all the lookbooks but i'm like you don't have any towels yet so i wanted to bring back something from turkey hopefully not an scd or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and so i go and i fucking find in this thing, I find these great towels, soft already, like they've been washed a million times, but they're still fresh. Buttery. And they had the nice little the tinsels on the bottom, colors, perfect batch. And so I go to the guy and I'm like, I got to get out of here with the deal. We just bought a bunch of fake fucking Louis bags, so I got deals on those. So I'm like the towel guy, right? And he just plays it hardball. And I'm like, I'm ready to check out. And I'm like, you know what? If you just give me like, you know, half off, and I'm probably going to spend, I don't know, 800, 900 bucks on towels, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like, so they use euros in Turkey, or they got another like yeah, a, they got their own Turk. Well, they got their own Turks and yeah, Caicos. All the Kron or something? No, that's okay. maybe Czech. Is that Czech? Yeah, that's I mean, how we're like spending Czech, in those strip clubs in in Czech no, Krones. Anyway, so but the guy, so so listen, I leave. I go, I, I leave. I go, fuck it. And I was ready to pay the guy. I go, you're not going to do this deal right now. I'm gone. I go back to Soho House, and all I can think about is the towels. And so I have the guy at the front desk there. You need to call this motherfucker and speak to him in Turkey and say, like, one of your guests, like, wants to call and he actually needs the towels. Like, so just tell him whatever. And so this guy, the only, I had to pay him extra to drop, to drop him back off at the Soul House before I left. So not only did I pay full, full price, I had to pay him to drop him off back in my hotel. No, they ship them. I was going to ship them. Ship's oh, nice. Speaking of that house, I walked by the other day when I was there. I took the girlfriend to walk by and I shed a tear or two. That was a great spot. Yeah. Uh, that was a great spot. Yeah, yeah. You built there. You did a good job. You yeah, I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't, the, I didn't see the nurseries and the blueprints when he was going <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I didn't see the <laughs> fucking nurseries. Did I? I let everyone spot. down. It was meant to be a oh, you did, that was, you that was, that was, oh, was just the use of the house. What are you talking about? Of course yeah. I did. It's I called a, a Turkish lira. L i r a. Oh yeah, the lira. Is that how you say it? Yeah, lira. Turkish lira. Yeah, the lira. Beautiful place though. But by the way, they got all the mosques and some of the oldest churches and mosques in the world there and uh it's it separates asia from europe is is t- turkey yeah, it's, it's the, the taint eh yeah it's right in the it's taint. the taint uh well why are they why are they why are they why are they good <laughs> is throwing a finger in there fuck you just right the old turkish taint why are why <laughs> why are they doing with the hair plugs they got the good they got the good know. they got you? the good hay over there what do they got over there no idea i mean it's obviously it's a transplant so it's going from here wherever they get it from on from your my, taint, my, right? from, <laughs> from, from, from my ass is where they're gonna get yeah. my, right from my it's, it's i mean it's like 
I think it's not even a quarter of the price. It's cheap yeah. too. That's why they, everyone's flying over. That's really well done. That's that's all I know. I know. She yeah. By the way, Turkish done. Airlines, great airline, and, yeah. the, and the airport in Istanbul is one of the best airports in the planet. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, everyone, I've never, I haven't heard a bad thing about Turkey here. Barard, you're keeping yourself in pretty good shape, eh? Why do you keep yourself in? And in, in, well, how old are you now? Forty seven. Forty seven. Yeah, you, you look good. Feel good. What, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing for work? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I, my girl bought the tone off. For Christmas, oh, that's right. You're telling me. Yeah, um, is that the one where you on? was so, a mirror? You yeah. just watch, you watch yeah. yourself the fuck in there. Stuff. Yeah, pretty, 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 pretty much. <laughs> but just to be honest, with you, diet. That's that's it's the diet. it's a diet. For it's me. everything here. You know, I'm drinking the apple too late. See, I stick. I can't lie too much. I love my ice cream every night. That's what it is for me too. My walking for me is the biggest. My my, because I'll I'll get fat. I'll get the big Berard gut going. The genetic Berard gut, but the the walking for me is 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 the big thing. Keeps uh, my my gut. I think when when we were at Bonnaroo, maybe you might have you might have put a few on back then. But you've always kept. I I don't remember you getting like where you're like, well, fuck, you, you didn't get as fat as I did. That's for sure. But how, how much uh, did you think you got, did you put on when you first retired? I can put on some weight. Uh, probably about good thirty pounds, easy. I got up over over. Uh, I think when I played, I was like two eighteen towards the end of my career, and I was up about two forty, yeah. so twenty five pounds. Sheldon Surrey tells told a great story a couple weeks ago, but he I hadn't weighed himself in forever, so he's he's up in Banff and he wants to go horseback riding with his girl, eh? <laughs> And there's a scale. The guy's like, you got to be under 265. Or he's like, I fuck, I'd weighed myself since I retired. He jumped on there. He was like 268. The guy, the guy wouldn't let him be on the horse. He's horse. like, I'm not going to break this horse's back. He's like, listen, rules are rules. So he's like, oh, I just told my girl, those, those things are dangerous anyways. Don't worry about that. They're, they're dangerous <laughs> anyway. I remember being the first time I, I knew I was getting fat. I was like, I'm getting pretty fat. But I'm buying the stretchy jeans and I'm, you know, the double XLs. But I was like, fuck, let's just see where I'm at. And I jumped on there. I got up to as high as 318. And then I went, I got to change something. I gotta, I gotta change something because at uh, three eighteen, that was you, you, you fellas, but you guys are forty plus now, too, boys. Yeah, you guys can find those doctors too. I know. The cheating doesn't uh, doesn't count yeah. as cheating. Oh, life force, you got, life force. Yeah. The hormones, the testosterone and stuff works well. I feel a lot better, especially with all the injuries we've had too. We can't lie. If you do no. it the right way, the doctors, it, it works for, for sure. sure. Life force has changed my. I feel way better from the stuff they've sent me. I'm doing some of these little mushroom drops every morning for for honor your gut, find your flow, and reach your potential. They make me feel better, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. You, if you don't have a doctor out there, and Life Force has been great for us, but if you don't have something out there helping you, you're behind the times right now because there's so much good stuff out there, eh? Absolutely. And just look at the fucking, everyone's, there's cancer everywhere. Like, simple blood draws exactly. yearly and screenings can help you prevent, and like, it's crazy, but people are, it's like you walk around and the billboards is like, oh, we can help you with cancer here, this, there. There's a lot of things now that can be preventative, not only to stay young and stay healthy and help your gut and fucking yeah. your brain health. Brain health is huge for us. Big time. You know, talking to people, but fucking, yeah, you screen yourself as you get into your 40s. You know, those colonoscopies aren't fun, but at 40, if you find it early, yeah. you're fucking good. If not, like Eddie Olchuk fucking went through stage fucking three colon cancer. Absolutely. I, I just crazy. lost my mind. I lost my mind last year, unfortunately, Fuck. colon cancer as well. So it's big. So I, I do really three to four blood draws a year. Resilience yeah. code out in Denver. Unbelievable. Yeah. Dr. Chad Prusmack, uh, genius. And then I have a guy back in Rhode Island as well in Barrington. Dr. Yeah. Souza helps big time. So you got yeah. to stay on top of that. It's got to stay healthy, boys. Yeah. For sure. There was a doctor in Aspen. I can't remember his name. Uh, but he said there was, there's four things you do. Dr. Darshan. You're basically gonna be okay and getting blood work and scans and there was a couple other ones but those were two that he was going like, huge yeah that yeah, yeah there's a heart, blood work there's a heart scan it's a it's a heart test right it's a yeah, test it's, to a, it's see. a cal it's like a calcium thing so make sure your arteries aren't clogging as well yeah and the colon was the one <laughs> lay off the, the door dash eh? lay off the door dash <laughs> lay off the door i'm <laughs> sorry to hear that about you i know i knew yeah. that happened yeah, yeah she i mean she was she was so a fighter runs in your family because i think it runs in my it's genetic yeah so you got it sure. you got to check it yeah, boys if you're listening out there fucking Get a check. Get the hoop checked out yeah, any, any way you can. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, speaking of big hearts, I can't ask. We can't have you on here without asking about Maddie. Oh yeah, Fernandez. <laughs> fucking oh yeah, he's always texting me. He's like, you took the fucking stars about his five hundred. You fucking nuts or what? He loves golf. He loves betting the uh, the Asian golfers early. He'll take CT Pan and Siwoo Kim and everyone first round. But uh, how often do you get to see each other as much as you Quite used to? a bit. I mean, he's a dad of the year now. He's yeah, a, yeah, a, good for him. Matty Jr., it's, it's been great. He's a cute, cute little kid. I think he's almost three now. He's, he's awesome. So he, uh, I don't see him as much, but uh, obviously with Tex, and it's, it's all about gambling. He, he loves gambling. And <laughs> I think he was mad at you for not taking the old Harrington this weekend. I cost you some money. Yeah, yeah I got Irish fella. I missed his text uh, during our 24, 24 hour bender that we had, bro. But he's like, I can't believe he didn't lay a little on the Irishman he a, in your he backyard. He ended up winning too, didn't he? He did win. Yep. Can't believe he didn't lay it on the Irishman in your own backyard. <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And then he sent me another great message. He's like, I'm going over to Spain, running with the Bulls, and then see him put I'm coming over. I'm like, I'm not running with the Bulls. Could you imagine? <laughs> this guy wants to run with the Bulls, B. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I know. missed that. I guess it's a spectacle. Huh. Um, well, they're doing we're, it in July. July, yeah, we, July 4th, we just, right around that era. We just missed it. We were in uh, Mallorca, and it was just it was just outside it, but there's... You know, there's there. You don't have to get out there and yeah. fucking bend over and hope one of these things gets. You know, so you were there in July, yeah. That's when. Yeah. That's when yeah. it goes down. You better. Yeah. You better get his ass in shape if he's going to run with the Bulls. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> yeah. the what a rush, though. Like, right now. Well, you think about who likes a rush, like Matty. Oh yeah, loves a rush. Oh, oh yeah. Rush. <laughs> but yeah. You know, oh, you'd, yeah, you'd expect him to be the guy that's just like, fuck it, I'll be the last one out here. You know, first time I started hanging out with Matty, oh yeah, we're at Pearl Jam at Fenway, and we're going, he's like, let's go grab a beer, and we're going to grab a beer, and then he, sp he spots some guy he hasn't seen in years, he's like, fuck, oh, it's one of the chances, this guy, let's go, get I'm like, I, what, I, let's just grab a beer, you beauty, I called him down, but uh, he just has such a big heart, man, anytime I was getting to know him, like, you come out here for Loops' parties, he would do anything for anyone, like, that's just, uh, that's how he, absolutely, yeah. he's, he's, he's uh, one of a kind, he's, he's a good, good friend, and one of my best friends back home, and and now he's got Junior running around. So how about his older son, Kyle? Kyle, Kyle he's Kyle's getting married this year. Fuck, yeah. Right. So yep. I party. He was with us years ago as like an 18-year-old kid at Coachella. Yeah, he, I think he's, a, <laughs> I don't know exactly, maybe 26, 27 now. He he's, saw he's some great, things great of us going down. It was the first week we ever got our Sprinter van back in the day. So oh, this is how wow. long ago it was. And uh, uh, fucking, oh yeah, introduced him to Kanye West in the artist area. It was hilarious. And then, you know, he was running around and the, the bands that he liked, he's a musician too. Yeah, right? he solid play. musician. Play. Yep. Kyle. He's a bass getting guitar, married. I believe. He's getting married. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, his fiance and, and uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. That'll make you feel all day ups. That's something we haven't done yet, boys. Yeah, yeah not yet. Right? Yeah, none of us have been married. Eh? No, no, not, not yet. yet. Thank yeah. God. Our crew's held off pretty good, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if it's good or bad. Never thought about that. No, one, <laughs> no, one, we can't. We can't get past a certain break point. They're like, no, nah, you see, guys, we, we're we're not in for this. But, B, I want to talk to you about, um, you know, some tragic news. You know, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, uh, a guy that you played with over in Russia, a guy that we all played against, Chris Simon. I know he meant a lot to you. Just maybe what you thought, or or you know, just what he meant to you back in the day. It's it's still tough to talk about. To be honest, with you, boys, I mean, it just happened. But uh, I was shocked to hear the news uh, for one. Uh, I live with Chris. We live together in, in, in Russia. Um, fortunately, we had the same financial advisor, uh, Phil Kenner, that kind of stole from us as well. So yeah. I know Chris for a long, long time. Uh, uh, warrior. Um, he was, you know, obviously when we lived together, we lived together in, in, in uh, Chekhov. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, he wasn't drinking that time too, so he was sober and stuff too. But Chris was just a dear, dear friend. Um, tough as they come. Oh, I mean, I can tell some stories. Because when he, we went over there, um, obviously he, he was done fighting. He didn't want to fight much. But these young kids were kind of testing him, and, and uh, sometimes he would just kind of snap. And I, I can remember on the ice uh, probably three or four times. I think I actually fought more over in Russia my, in that one six month than I did my whole NHL career because guys were just kind of – he'd bury the, the top guy and then would start like line brawls. But a couple times I remember just screaming at him kind of like to kind of get him out of his uh, – Snappages like he was hurting guys. You know, yeah. you get finally so pissed that he would just start pummeling these guys. And I'd be like, Chief, enough, Chief, yeah. enough. I saw him dent in a couple of guys. I mean, literally <laughs> dented in their cheekbones over Russia. And I was like, This guy is tough as they come. Yeah. And then he just struggled mental illness. I mean, we yeah. can talk about it, uh, you know, familiar a little bit uh, with it. And it's, it's, it's not fun. And I, I think Chris went back to the reservation and, and had a hard time. Um, and I know Paul Theophanis, our, our agent that we, we use in Russia and stuff, was a great, great guy. Was trying to get get him some help up there, and unfortunately, it was too late. So it's just sad, sad, sad news. Yeah, it is. did you did you notice anything? Like, so there's two guys that happened to me with Rick Rippin, you know, who I loved, I, and we knew he had problems, right? But then Wade Belak, a guy who was my, one of my favorite teammates. So you played Beaker in Toronto, right? Did I you didn't play with him, but I did the uh, the Battle of Blades. Right there. I was there. Yeah, I was the there. Yeah, I was there that morning. Like to that that one to me caught me. Like I didn't think Beaker had, you know, I didn't think he was dealing with anything. He's happy go lucky guy, always smile on his face. I knew he didn't love fighting, but. The, I mean, did you did you kind of t t knew that that that? Chris I knew Chris had... struggled. Yeah. You know, struggled a little bit. Um, we we had you know talked about it a little bit, but he was a big, quiet guy too. I mean, yeah. if anybody knew him, he didn't really really didn't talk too much. He was just kind of uh, who he was. But you could tell he you know he struggled. I mean, obviously when you deal with sobriety and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, but mental illness, I think, was you know I don't I don't you know a lot of people talk about head injuries and stuff like this. I, I don't know if we can say that about Chris. I don't know if he had struggled with CTE or, or anything like yeah. that, but I think mental illness was probably part of his life for and I'm I mean I'm familiar we're familiar with you know some of the reservations and stuff and I don't think it's that can be tough, tough. It can be depressing and how some of the, you know they they grow up and stuff it's 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 not an easy life that's for sure. 
Yeah, I, I, I joked with you that, and this is true. I think the only book I ever finished is Bernard's book. It's the only, it's only, it's only book I've ever finished. A lot of pictures, a lot of pictures, pictures in there for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But we've all talked about retiring and like, I mean, you went through it, you know, obviously losing your eye and then coming back and then having to retire. Like, what, what was the hardest, like probably the eye injury, but then you come back and then you retire. How, how was retirement for you right right it, when you first It went? was tough, I mean, to be honest with you, because um, kind of two things hit me at once, obviously retirement, um, and then I had to deal with the financial situation with my financial advisor. So it was all, I was living in New York and, and living with Andy and stuff and all kind of, uh, you know, I thought I had a little bit of, I thought I built a little bit of uh, a net, more of a nest egg than I thought. And then all of a sudden we wake up and it's gone. So I was dealing with that and stuff. And then, you know, obviously I, you know, I talk about it, I've dealt with anger issues and things like that and still do once in a while. But <laughs> but still, I mean, you know, I talked to a therapist for a long time and it helped, it helped big time. Yeah. You know, I talked about that a lot. There's nothing wrong with, with talking to somebody when you, when you, when you need help. And no. Always you find the right one. And, and, and I did uh, back in New York and it helped a lot for sure. When you played Beast, was there, was there always like, was there ever moments where everything, you know, there was nothing, there's no noise, like you were just hockey, or do you feel like you always had stuff on the go, like from from your upbringing where you were, like, you know, the 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 path you took, like, you know, you came on the scene and your first overall pick, and you know, a lot of talk and um, expectations, yeah, expectations. But were you ever able to just go out and play hockey, or was there always just stuff going? on? I was able to go out, but great great question. But I the support I had, I mean, from yeah. you know, big family, um, five siblings. You know, four boys, two girls. So in my parents as well. So I mean, it was always I like noise. To be honest with you, I, I liked hockey. Was kind of get away from it, and just concentrating hockey and yeah. stuff. But even today, I like you know big families. I like to be around. You know, yeah. For me, it's more silence that I, that I struggle with. Uh, even sleeping, I like to sleep with a TV on. Yeah, kind of noise, me too. You know? Um, that's how I get am. That buster was, rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, just gr- gr- growing up like that, I think helped a lot. And I think retirement once it once it comes to an end, there's like almost like there's no noise, but you still have family, which yeah. helps a lot. But I mean, you know, I'm not going to shit on the, the the unions or I think every sport. I think they still still don't do a great job of preparing athletes for after the after the sport. It's kind of like once you're done, you're done and figure it out yourself. Um, and it, they still need to work on some programs. I think that to help. That's one thing. Yeah, I, wish I, I, I agree. Done. I wish I would have done is set myself up so when, right when I retired, I had a job or had something that I knew what I wanted to do. Um, and still, still today, sometimes I figure out like what 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 what's the next calling? What what do I want to do? And yeah. it's, I think that's part of life. Well, I, I just had, you know, I just played, you guys know this, but I just played in this recent golf tournament for these veterans. Um, it was at Riviera's in LA. It was put on and it was a great thing. And these guys, you know, their research into vets and their struggle with PTSD and struggle with, you know, with mental health leads back to the uniform. Not so much the, the you know, the w- watching your buddy fucking get his leg blown off. Like not so much that on the battleground, but the fact that you have to take off your uniform no one knows who you are. You don't have the leader, you know, telling you and your team what to do, right? Similar to us. Now, their foundation built this university, gives a chance for all these guys to go in and, and learn how to be health, you know, health instructors, physical trainers, nutritionists, um, yoga, yoga, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's a university. And I often think, I'm like, we didn't go to, a lot of us didn't go to university. A lot of us didn't have like that group of guys in like Madison, Wisconsin or fucking you know, wherever Penn state that like you always lean on call. Like, Hey, I heard you got this new job. I'm looking for a job. Like a Fucking hockey's yeah. hockey's different. And unless you knew how to, you know, Obi talks about Ty Domi and how Ty Domi, the whole course of his career was working on business his whole way, leaves the game, fucking hedge funds, this blah, blah, blah. But hockey needs that post hockey career university that isn't set up by the PA and say, it hasn't been the NHL is not spending money into it, but what new better place the, to go and like re you know, re, visit being on a team again you know when you're done it's tough and the biggest thing is routine that's, yeah that's yeah. what's for us that was hard for we, me like, yeah your routine yeah. all of a sudden you don't have you wake up and you know and nothing you to tell you got nothing to do and i think that's where we all struggle i was looking forward to garbage day but on wednesday i'm like all right at least i got something to do here like <laughs> yeah, what, if so for, cool, what if there's a cool place we could all go as ex-athletes like even if you had a family like listen honey i'm gonna go on this fucking i got a six-week course in january and i gotta go do another thing in the spring i'm gonna learn like a full new thing like, or, or whatever but you go and you you do it it's not just saying it's one thing you were so busy it's hard to fucking retune the mind again you know you need to you need to like i look back at my career like you you need to prepare for when you're done like even now, these guys are making big bucks or whatever. If you make, and it's not even about making. Like you can have a ton of money, but you need to have some idea of what you're going to do when you stop. Because I didn't. I was, you know, I was worried about playing and getting laid and having fun, and I didn't know how long it was going to last. And then yep. like I never thought about life after hockey until it was fucking over. And then I'm like, I mean, thank God for this thing because who, who knows what I would have done. I mean, it's 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 something I tell Weezy 
I, I, Mackenzie Weger, I tell all the time, I'm like, you got to be start thinking about life after hockey right now. What comes are you going to do? Too. Comes quick. Yeah, real. Comes quick, quick and it's scary. And, and and Ty actually, we missed you at the All Star game in Toronto, but um, but Ty said I was doing business throughout my whole career. He's like, I was focused on that, getting ready for life after hockey, which I thought was pretty cool. I agree. I mean, Ty's Ty's you know one of a kind for sure. But he was. He I mean, I played with him obviously. Um, you know, got cut short with the eye injury, but uh, he was always busy. Yeah. You know, he's always having meetings, yeah. and a bunch of us laughed at him. You know, it would be <laughs> bust his balls, but he, he did it right. I mean, you look at him now; he's very successful, and and he's yeah. all over the place. And and uh, he's 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 a good friend. Ty, Ty is talking about hearts. He's got one of the biggest hearts yeah. I've played with for sure. He's a great dude. He's fucking just still like you wouldn't want to. Uh, he's he's a little gorilla. Right? Yeah, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to. Just... And mean oh. and mean. Yeah, he's he's a good guy. But if if especially if uh, you if somebody gets picked on that's, that he likes or family or friends that I'd watch out for Ty. That's for sure. Well, Feist, I think he's yeah. tougher than he was. There, on ice. there was some guy in Toronto the last couple of weeks back or whatever. It was like Max got in a fight. He kept he hit Ty twice. I'm like, dude, well, I wouldn't have touched Ty once, but definitely not the second time. No. Ty kind of looked like Bella. <laughs> don't don't mess around here with yeah, me. Uh, B, I want to talk to you, a guy that means a lot to us, Sheldon, uh, Colorado Extreme Hockey. Uh, you know, when we were there, you were you were there working with these kids. Um, just talk about that program, and 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 that's kind of what you've been doing since you know last couple of years, right? Helping these young kids and yeah. developing guys. Yeah, exactly. So we uh, about I think it's four or five years ago now. My old high school, Mount Saint Charles Academy, when soccer were around, we started. Uh, basically, we saw where hockey was going, and then back east, prep school hockey, and mostly high, high school hockey was 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 on a downfall. I mean, it's pretty much non-existing anymore, unfortunately. But these academy teams is, is where it's at. So it's U14, U15, U16, and U18. Um, actually, the Nationals for the U.S. Uh, is coming up here soon, I think April 1st through the 7th. Um, and we actually put the – we have a U14, U15, and our U18 team is uh, ahead of the Nationals. Um, and and basics, nice. yeah, so it's, it's it's a great program. I mean, in the hockey, they play 60-some games a year. They have strength coaches. I mean, it's just yeah. they practice during school, you know, during school time. It's 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 a pretty cool setup. I'm jealous. I wish they had this for for the when we were growing wave. up. It's the new wave of, yeah. of how to speak. But, USA hockey's come yeah. a long way. Yeah. So basically, I met Sheldon. You know, through 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 the fellas um, with with Andy McGolfin and obviously Joff and you guys out out in. Um, out in Colorado, so hopefully we're, we're going to do the same thing. I mean, obviously uh, with the Colorado Extreme, it's younger kids. It'll start around U8 uh, to U12, but he's got the right idea out there, and uh, you know, looking forward to working with him. Hopefully, we can figure some out, and it might be moving out there to, to really help him and, and push that program. And, and I've kind of done a little bit with Mount, so we'll kind of work on both both ends a little bit. Yeah, both sides. Of, so I mean, he's given so much back, yeah, and to bring it and. And for him, it's so smart. You can, uh, you know, get your program full of guys that play in the NHL, and to, that, that's where you—that's where these kids will learn from guys like yourself. And I know Shorzy went out there, and I think even PA might have went out and helped. But he's got guys that you know through the alumni that want to help him. Absolutely, uh, you know, it's in, in work, working with the young kids. I, I have fun. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter which level. Especially, uh, we, we do some skating cleanse back home and edge work and, and stride work with Stephen Demopoulos and, and Rodney Millet and stuff. So, we, we, you can see some of the kids that aren't elite. You know, we call the elite programs or whatever, but some of these younger kids that, that are learning to skate, they actually they, they kind of catch on even faster and kind of improve better. So it doesn't matter which level we want to work for it. And that's I think that's unfortunately. Hockey's not a uh, middle-class sport anymore. Fortunately, it's really, yeah. really expensive to play, which is we kind of want to try to change that era a little bit and give kids to play. You know, give There's got to be a couple options for them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They need to understand the game Single and, a, then, and then how, you know, it provides like a place for – your camaraderie and a place to get away from like either your you know your parents situation at home or fucking school sucks i want to go hang out with my hockey buddy yeah, like, and a locker room jump on yeah. a bus and travel a couple hours and play some hockey but you're right it is expensive yeah. just to further up on this um the programs at what age and like now through some of the you know the kids you work with like, are you seeing like the next jack hughes like oh, at what age and now are you seeing this kid go okay he's the one now we got to fucking get him to like the next level. I see 13, 14. Yeah. Uh, my nephew, uh, Brody Berard, who's a big defenseman. but Love he, this kid. Yeah, he can hit. He, he's a good player. He's got the hockey IQ. We're working on his foot. He's a big, he got big quicks. So we're working on his foot speed and stuff. But he's got, he's very gifted. Definitely sees the ice very well. But he's playing with a kid called Rocco Pelosi. His, Pelosi's brother, I was drafted, I think last year, third round by the Bruins. But this kid's the U14. He is unbelievable. You watch his kid play. Forward, D. Forward, forward. Forward, yeah. Just um, he makes everybody around him better, better. Wow. and he just gets on there. Yeah, yeah, he really does. He's. I jumped on him before. I actually flew out here. We jumped on the U14 to work in a power play, some five on three, five on four stuff, and, and basically um, he just gets it. And you know what? You were like when you when I was talking to him, he's looked me in the eyes. Yeah, yeah, he's, he gets it. He uh, was listening. 
Um, but I would say 13, 14 is, is the, the right age now where you can see kids start to take off at that, that uh, elite Does he have an edge level. to him? Does he have an Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's nasty. He's from Philly. Philly boy. Oh, his dad was, I believe his dad was an ex-Philly cop. Sweet. Um, yeah, Sweet. really good kid, good family. Um, and he can play. He's nasty. I mean, we see the skill level now. It's, it's through the roof. And I've gone to a couple junior games, and they're just as skilled. But, like, we, we talked about when we grew up, right? I, I, I didn't even work out till I went to junior hockey. Like, I, you know, I played baseball in the summer. I played hockey. Like, yeah, these guys are all skilled. But, like, is it too much to, like, do the, are they learning, like, how to play the game as well? Or are they so focused on the skill side of it that learning the game is kind of secondary? You know, like, hockey sense. Do these kids have it, or are they learning it? Or are they just so focused on skills and working out that that's kind of secondary nowadays? That's a good, I mean, my opinion, how, can you teach hockey sense? That's what, that's oh, where, hockey IQ fun. and hockey sense, I think you, it's kind of a gift. Um, yeah. Obviously, the skill and all that level, skating you can work on, but a sense in IQ, I think, is you either have it or you don't. I yeah. Mean, that's, that's, that's a question. Do you either pay attention at the whiteboard or you're just like, fucking oh, looking at <laughs> yeah. this. And then when you go on the ice, you just, you know, um, to me, you either have it or you don't. I mean, if you pay attention to things like that, but the, the, as, as far as the hockey sense, I, I think it's, that's a gift. Like, I think the game is as skilled as it's ever been, but I would even go back to, like, especially our era and, and, and your era being, and like, puck possession, and you look at the Red Wings back in the day, like, today these kids come in, and, yeah, they can fly, and they can fucking stick can, and they can, but, like, there's, I don't know, we're losing that kind of, like, puck possession to a certain extent. I see these young kids come in, they can all just fly. It's like, I, I don't know, it worries me a bit that it's just chipping and chasing, and, and then when they get the puck in their hand, they're, they're as nasty as they can be, but are we losing the little... I don't know, artistic side of the game a bit, or am I just an old dinosaur over here? I might be an old dinosaur. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean the, the younger kids today, I mean, the, what I'm watching the academy, I don't watch a lot, you know, I watch the NHL, I don't watch a lot of college hockey. I feel like sometimes college hockey is into that chipping, um, you know, throw the puck yeah. deep kind of. They, they kind of take away from some of these skill skills and agility these guys have. Um, I think that's why a lot of times these guys will get drafted and NHL teams will pull them out of college pretty quick because they want to develop them now. The American Hockey League, we all know, is a development league now yeah, compared yeah. to what it used to be when we were there. Um, you know, our our uh, age bracket was kind of a, a goon league, to be honest with you. But now it's a development league. It was. It was just yeah. the big boys down there chucking them. That's no, exactly. So, and, and then leading that, it's funny how times have changed. Like, I, you played professional junior hockey. Yeah. Where'd you play? Uh Detroit Junior Yeah, Plenio, Plenio, Plenio Ontario, oh, Ontario League. League. Yeah, so I left. I left uh, high school after my yeah. junior year. Yeah, and went up and uh, played as a 17, 18. So would that have changed had you know this USHL been around then? Because now, like you know, Elliot Friedman came out by whatever a couple of weeks ago, and at the Board of Governors meeting is is all the talk on the NCAA, you know, and the and the rules and the handcuffing to the CHL kids, right? Yep. And now they're thinking of xing it. That since 1995 has been a rule. Like at 16, these kids in Canada or in the U.S. have to make a decision on their future, which could be forever, of not going to an NCAA school if they choose to go play one game in the dub or one game in the O. And now you have competition where maybe not all the best kids are going to the CHL anymore. You know, they're going through, yeah, I'm looking at some guys, Matty Kachuk, Montour, Cole Caulfield, Luke Hughes, Jack Hughes, all these kids go through the development league in the USHL. It's an incredible program. Your thoughts on yeah, how that whole that, dynamic's changing? It's it's gonna. I would think it's gonna change now because now you can get paid playing college too, right? So it, that doesn't affect your yeah, status, yeah. Your status quo. Yeah, that was some. That was something to do with it too. Yeah, I yeah. think it's your style of play. I mean, a great example is um, is Tyler Boucher, Brian Boucher's son, right? Went to BU for a little bit, but that kid played an NHL game. He should have went to junior right away. But the CHL has an awful rule now. So before when I was growing up, we could declare a league. I could go play in a dub. I could go play in the O. I could play in the Quebec. Now it's by region. So if you grow up on the East Coast, you got to play in the Quebec League. No offense, but once really we play in the Quebec. Yeah. 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 Right. So don't worry, our, listen, want, our I, listeners I, I don't care. The O. Bush declared the dub. You know, you get to declare a league. Now it's by region. So hopefully, you know, where Tyler Boucher, um, hopefully my nephew, he'll he wants to play college hockey. Yeah. But he should hopefully make the national program. But he'd be living in Michigan, so he couldn't play in the O. If you stayed at home and didn't make national program, you'd have to play in a Quebec league. Yeah. So that's basically now that's that rule's got to change too. They did that because you know then the, the junior teams get to handpick their players from the, the U.S. But it does seem with this national program, yeah, a lot more kids, even Canadian kids, are playing hockey. I mean, yeah. playing college hockey, they want to play college hockey. Yeah, I would have loved yeah. to. So I mean, is there gonna yeah, is there not, when I first heard this, I thought like, okay, if I go play in the CHL and I don't make it, then then can I go play NCAA or is there an age limit? You can't just like I guess I'm saying, can I play till I'm 20 in the old and then be like, yeah. fuck it, I'm gonna go be yeah. a freshman at 21 in the yes. NCAA? That's yeah, that's yes. how. Hopefully they could change it, but the average yeah. the average the that, average age right now, freshman. 
is almost 21 years old in the NCAA. Yes, yeah, so it's great. Well. You can, you can oh, go earn wow. a living if you're a half. USHL, everyone goes, you know, they, they, the kids, it depends on your talent level. I didn't know if that. If you're well. a stud, you're going to play at 18 or 19, like Hannafin, you know, these yeah. guys that did. Um, but basically, they, they want you almost to finish school, whether it's prep school, then you go to USHL, you don't even go to school. These kids sit at home and then they play you know junior hockey gonna for affect, two years. You know it's going to affect big time when you think about it? It's going to affect the NHL teams drafting guys at 18 and wanting them to sign before their three-year deal so they don't go back in the draft because these kids are going to have an opportunity to play in their junior teams and then go to college and make, you know, say say they make the 100 grand a year or 150 grand. They don't have to go to the AHL and be stuck under the contract of a uh, Columbus Blue Jackets or you know what I mean? It's it's going to it's going to bring more competition to these leagues below the AHL that will prevent like if I was a fucking agent I'd be like, "You know what, kid? If you hold out another 2 years and you go into college and go play a couple years, you were going to get you anywhere and you can make money doing it. I, it's, if, yeah, I've always said that I think that unless you're like like a Berard or even you for like a first rounders, I, I, okay, maybe, but like 18 still too young. Like some of these kids get drafted at 18, they're, they're not even nowhere near what they're going to turn into, what they could be. Like, yeah. I think if you bumped it up to like where you don't draft these kids till 21, unless they're special. You know, then it could then it could be worth. You could out. maybe just declare to, to to for your draft. I mean, yeah, if they do a twenty year draft or you know nineteen or twenty years old, you either, if they are a good player, you can declare it. Yeah, either you declare something. at eighteen or you got to wait till twenty one. Yeah, yeah, right? Baseball, the baseball, these guys fucking get drafted twice. A lot of them, they yeah. they go fucking one five like first round, fifth overall, yep. and then they go back in two years later because they don't want to. I think the, I think the, the league definitely has to take a look at it for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? Definitely, and in, in CHL for sure, they got to look at it and, and let some of these kids, you know, play the CHL and then don't, uh, you know, they don't lose their NCAA eligibility. Yeah, you're right about how it's the and I and I what's it called now? NIL. Yeah. NIL. So back in the day, although they didn't pay us anything in, in junior hockey, that was considered oh, no. that was considered yeah, seventy three dollars. I think. Yes, yeah. that was considered to the NCAA of us getting paid. So that that took our eligibility off the table. So right. I think you're right. That's what opened this up. But let's Absolutely. talk. Let's talk about that. Like I was all for. College kids getting paid, and us junior kids, we didn't make any money either. But now, like you got Dion's kid making four bananas. I, I think it's gone too far. Like if you're if you're if you're him, why would you want to leave college if you're making four million dollars driving around a Rolls Royce? Like I think it's gone too far the other way now. Like Van Wilder, just, right? Yeah, like you think these guys are making too, like that's too much money for college. You know? I agree. I, I think that's why Saban. And I love Coach Prime. Yeah, I think if you go back and look, I haven't watched the whole interview, but I think Saban uh, does something on. I don't know if they it was. Congress or wherever they was talking about it, some some somewhere he was, but he was talking about that's basically why I retired. Him and his wife, you know, is basically they they were done with it and they thought this was going to ruin college football. Yeah, he he, he he might be. I mean, I'm happy for these kids, but it's it's just a lot. The last thing for me on the alumni game, uh, <laughs> first of all, Sheldon, he's going to have it every year. I can't wait. Stapled. But you went out there, fuck, we couldn't see no bucket, and you had your glasses on, and you're down there blocking shots. I'm on the other team, and I'm, I was fearing for your life, buddy. You were just out there, just blocking shots, with no bucket on. Yeah, that, that, that don't worry about the head. I was lucky <laughs> enough genetically. I never know what I did. I did deal with too many concussions, or but for me, it's more my vision. I can't see as it is. So if I wore a visor out there, the fog would have been done. Oh, I was so at least the, the the goggles. Were, I mean, the goggles. I should say the, the uh, Hanson brothers' glasses were fogging a little bit. But I did the same thing in winter classic. I just put a toque on, and, and uh, the the uh, the glass. I have to if I put that tough shield on. He played no buggy, uh, right? Yeah, no he buggy. played yeah. no buggy. I know. I, yeah, well, he's yeah. doing. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I just yeah. remember Jimmy Dowd from from the uh, Shuppy. Like he's good uh, out game. there. Jimmy no Dowd bucket, was good out there too. That game. Poor Berard yeah. got hit first shift. This guy was a guy. It was a firefighter too. He was a good kid. He got. He was just picked late, and you were like one of his favorite players. He's like an Islanders fan. And <laughs> fucking first shift. Loophole lifted your stick, or maybe this fucker. What about Loops? Lift, yeah, Loops lifted your stick. Nuts. Loops the worst alumni player now ever. <laughs> he goes just high sticking everyone. And poor Berard takes this bird cage oh. right in the yapper, and you come back to the bench, and you're, I'm like, oh god, no. Yeah, probably could use the zipper too. Too, I was really pissed <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> like these alumni games are great, and I, and I love what Sheldon's doing. But like, as ex players, is there anything that's just worse than getting fucking clipped in an alumni game? Like, no. I've, I've yet to get one. But if I do, I, it's not gonna be pretty. I was getting pretty pissed though at that PA and a couple of those guys flying around there and getting, or getting beat. It was like seven to one, eight one. If we didn't have Hank in the net, we would have lost <laughs> no, 20, was, 20 to uh, zero. Fuck. So I was getting kind of a little blood pissed bad. off a little bit. Yeah. Well, hey, that's the definition of hey, blood. Dude, that's I. I warned. He can play. I yeah, Still I play. I warned Sheldon and Uppy and Loops going in because I, I know. The alumni boys are called. I know they play monthly and they skate weekly. Month? Yeah, this is, I'm yeah. like boys and hey, dude, fuck it. I, 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 uh, the hotel we went to the St. Regis. He had a piece of salmon and broccoli after the game. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how'd you play tomorrow? Or what? I have a slice of pie, but you just had 17 points. I'm like, so point being is, and I've told Sheldon this, and this is all of our jobs. We got to get some better, uh, some more NHLers in there for for the other team. We just 
That that yeah. Avs team, they were they play every week. They have oh, like control right. breakouts and shit. Absolutely, and they are swinging here, swinging there. Hey, Duke looked like he could still play. He, he might be able to. He was he yeah. was nasty out there. Hey, B, I want to ask you about the, the USA hockey program. We, I know we touched on the you know the development program, but I'm talking the big boys here. We've we've been lucky enough. Uh, the Kachuk brothers have been great to us. I love both those guys. Brady's my favorite captain. Clayton Keller uh, is an absolutely great kid. I mean. You look at this team on paper. We're going to have a Four Nations Cup next year, and then we're going to have the Olympics the year after. But like, just how far USA Hockey's coming. You're one of the guys that that put it on the map. But this program now, these kids, look out. They're legit. Yeah, they they really are. And, and you know, credit to the national program. Um, you know, lucky enough, I I grew up on you know on the East Coast, and and uh, I was very aware of the Tuchuk boys early on. Um, even when they're young kids, we, we you know they grew up on the Cape and. Guys were Marty McKinnis, Scott Lachance, uh, and then they were they were feared back then. Just the street hockey. I know some some of the wives <laughs> didn't want their boy, their boys playing with them because they were just tough kids. And then Walt's one of the best. Uh, you know, I was lucky yeah. enough to play with some of those guys at the you know the first Olympics in '98. Uh, you know, Billy G and and Waiter and, and Tony Amonti and you know, Leach, obviously Chelios, Madonna, all those guys. Oh. Brett Hull. So I'm I'm a young kid, 19 years old. It was great, and Walt was always one of the best. And you know, he's just a legend. I mean, he, yeah. the kid can play. He's tough. I mean, he, and look at his voice. I mean, look what Matt's done in Florida. He's turned that whole organization around. It's, it's fun to watch. And I would say those are probably my best players to watch. I would say top players to watch right now when they're on when they're on TV. I put I dial into Canada's in one, right? Buddy, speaking of fun to watch, remember the '96 World Cup? Unreal. That was fucking unreal. Yeah, that was my you first put, NHL. Is that camp? Claude Lemieux and fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, was that awesome? That was Walt beating fucking yeah. Yeah, yeah. completely. Yeah. They're just fights and it was. It was, it was the first time his name World Cup too because it was after the Canada Cup. Yeah, exactly. They called it World Cup and they had, well, yeah, those guys with footer and all those guys were just yeah. you know throwing them, chucking them. Yeah, I mean, hockey. Hope they bring that, they're bringing that back, right? Yeah, they are. It's just and and I don't know. We've got to know these USA kids and like. I don't know what's going on with you know the CHL and stuff like that, but these kids seem to be coming out of that development program with already a bond. And I know I know Clay Keller and the Kachucks are from St. Louis, and maybe they knew each other before. But overall, we went, we went to we went to Maddie's house for the All Star game, and he had the the whole fucking team USA over there. They're sitting around drinking, and I'm thinking, Fuck these team, guys what? are rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm hoping I'm hoping Team USA is doing this. Yeah, I hope their boys Canada, are doing. They yeah, had some team, they yeah. had some team building going. Be that yeah. we're all big team builders. I was like, this is this. It is starts something. in that program because at 16, you know, the U16 and then the U18 is where it starts, and then you know they're living together, they're going to school together. Um, they do build it obviously out in there, Plymouth, Michigan. But I think that's how a, a team gets built, and yeah. you know, it's experience wise, and they're playing all those USHL teams, so it's, they play a great schedule and and they're developing. Yeah, USA hockey is doing a great job. The thing about the, the Kachuk boys is you can just tell they grew up around the game, huh? Like the way they just, the way they, and this is from what I've heard people play with them, the way they treat the trainers, the way they treat the, the boys on the road. And like you can just tell they, even when you talk to them, that they grew up around locker NHL room locker kids. room kids. Locker like, right. That's that's that, that's a degree. That's yeah. like going to Harvard. You 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 grow up around an NHL locker rooms with Walt Kachuk and you're his boys. That is a fucking degree. They're built to be do- doing what they're doing. Yeah. That's what they're built for. They are. The best was we're in Florida. And uh, we're up in the Panthers Lounge in, or the Panthers Club. Big Walt comes in, so I just give him my old fashioned. He wants an old fashioned. I'm like, just take mine. He's like, no, no, no. I'm just I'm like, take my old fashioned. I'll wait for the next one. And then he's like, look at Brady out there. Doesn't even know he's playing in an All Star game. Just thinks he's out there with his buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and then another great line is Brady snuck out that night at Maddie's house, and Big Walt finally Big Walt comes over. He's smoking the cigars, and Chelly walks in. I'm just, I'm just soaking it up what Walt's saying. And he goes, hey, Matty, where'd, where'd Brady go? He's like, ah, oh, Dad, I got to tell you, I think he went home about an hour and a half ago. He's like, I'm not even mad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's, Great. I can't wait to see the best on best, man. And, uh, and Berard, we've, we've been talking over the course of the weekend. Um, nobody rushed the puck like you did, fella, but this this guy may be a little better than you. Uh, Kale McCarr. <laughs> well, what do you like? Insane. It's insane, right? When As an ex-defenseman, the way he can walk the line and move his feet. Yeah. And when you watch him play, is, it, is that obviously what jumps out? Absolutely, and it's it's no offense to UMass Amherst. I just can't believe he played at UMass Amherst. Yeah. To, to be yeah. honest with you, I mean, his ske- but he keeps getting better and better, and I think Gretz said it best. I mean, he's the modern-day Bobby Orr. I know. I mean, his his feet, but with more with Mohawks yeah. and the way he can move his feet and all this stuff, I don't see him able to walk the blue line. I don't see He doesn't seem like he gets tired out there. He reminds me of Lidstrom a little yeah. bit. Play, he can play almost 30 minutes. He doesn't even look like he's sweating. He gets a little bit of red cheeks a, a, a tad. <laughs> the odd time. Yeah, he yeah, does he, get a little bit of face. Cheeks, he's got he, the baby he, face. I mean, I love watching him play. He's insane. What do they call it? What did you said a Mohawks? Yeah, it's kind of. Is that the ten and two? Yeah, is that what they call it? Exactly. Mohawk turn. Yeah, Mohawk. 
just the opening. These guys must be throttling in the bedroom now with the way their hips their move. Hips, I think they're yeah. saving the hips. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's but, why we but I'm sure too, they'll be getting, they're not leaving the hips. They'll their hips too, or, you know, so before they're 50, they the they're working. Because yeah. just you, you can't, there's nothing you can do. You're grinding it. And yeah. those guys are, I mean, he plays. What is he averaging a night? You guys, twenty seven probably something like that. Yeah, yeah. our hips, just, yeah, our hips. And he's got the puck for all for all twenty seven minutes that he's just controls there. the puck. The thing that I love about him B is the way he can defend, like his stick on puck, his strength, the way he gets under sticks and like boom, boom, takes it gone. I'm like, what the hell? And it's just skating. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, obviously, is is is. He's just a special player. Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't think there's any. You know. I don't think there's a better defenseman ever right now. No. To be honest. But you bring up Lindstrom, and I remember who was my team. Was it? Was it fucking? I don't know if it was Disco Dan. No, he had him in the minors. It must have been like Mike Sullivan or something. He's he's pulling clips of Lindstrom to show me. I'm like, well, first of all, Sully, I think <laughs> I think we got a couple two different players here. But Lindstrom would never cross over. You remember that way he defend? Like he would never cross over. He just would be right there and he'd walk the line. Like he made it look very, very. Yeah, that's a big thing with the young kids now is is crossing over feet. You know, that's yeah. that's a thing. You get you, especially as a D man, you get tangled. I know as me as me as an offensive defenseman coming up, coming with coming up on the ice with speed. I would look for that D man across his feet. Yeah, across his feet, I'd explode one way or the other. Exactly. Um, and that's what we're trying to teach these young D now is you can't cross your feet. And that's again the skating, but it starts at a young age. I mean, this is embarrassing to say, but I could not. This is you know, it's a different as as skating, I guess, coaches and stuff at a young age. But I turned pro at what nineteen. I could not pivot to the right side. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I didn't even know it. Could yeah. Until, What's until, a pivot? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pivot. I'm skating forward, right? And yeah. Then I literally had to work in Milbury. the one who pointed out to me. He's like, you can't fucking turn right. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like it was insane. So then I had to work on that already in the NHL. So that's what these kids now, you know, where we're, we're kind of working with them, and they're they're just uh, all these kids can skate. There's no really third or fourth liners now that that. Uh, oh, no. that you know. Well, I've got fourth liners that can't there. shoot like yeah. Hall shot the puck. Yeah. There's no. Well, it's a there's no fourth liners that sticks. you know. The like, sticks are nasty. Oh, that's what the push and pull. I mean, we we're teaching that too, which I can't even. I still don't know how to shoot that way. But you know, this, this kid Steph Demopoulos does with a lot of the shooting instruction back home, and, and these all these these young kids, eight nine year old kids, can fire the puck. They're going all they like to say is bar down, bar yeah, down. Yeah. You know, they, I hate when they say that, but it's that's, <laughs> that's all they do. Like shoot, the, especially the young Dean. It. I go, I snap now because you watch, go watch a young game. You fourteen, you fifteen. They're really every high. guy's missing the puck high. Oh, like, it drives me fucking. You would have got murdered back in the day by the forwards, eh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Shoot the puck low, boys. But you know, like 12, you remember 18 the first... inches off the ice. Yeah. Because I always explain it. You either get tipped. shoot a mill and that's tipped up yeah. or tipped down. If you're yeah. shooting high, it's, it's, it's either it's only getting tipped down or high stick. Exactly. Because, there was know. no better feeling back in the day, though, when you first be able to raise the puck or like <laughs> hit the net from the blue line, like with the slapper, you know. Yeah. But now these kids, you're right. They're probably like fucking like six years old, just ripping. I don't think anybody uses a flex over 75, 80. Oh, either. Yeah, it's I insane. Know. Hey, a kid that we love here is uh, you're going to see him more in Buffalo now, but Bull Byer. Yeah, yeah, this kid. I mean, a little Burrard game. Yeah, he does. He has I, I haven't, game. and it's, it's sad he to say, but I haven't seen him play game. enough He's enough yet. Burrard. Yeah, well, hey, you'll see him more now. How, how old is he now? He's 22, 20, 21. Yeah, no, he's, he's young. young. He's tw- yeah, twenty three. Um, Mass. But you're, you're, you'll love his game. You'll, you'll see him now more in Buff. He, he didn't get he didn't get to flourish as much in Colorado playing behind McCarr and stuff. But he he has a little brag to him. I, I love. I remember watching him play World Juniors and the way he could skate. He reminded me of Duncan Keith. I'm like, who the fuck is this Byram kid? And great kid. His old man is an absolute beauty. So keep an eye on him. But I want to cool. ask you another guy you've been talking about here is Kucherov. I mean, you're loving everything that this guy's doing, huh? He's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, right now he's my favorite player in the league. Um, he is. It's all brains. I mean, it really is. He just can. He's fun to watch. I mean, the plays he makes out there. Just he sees. I said this the other night too yeah. in the UNPA. I said he sees plays before the other players are even seeing yeah. them, and he see he knows what I'm going to do before I know what I do. What I'm going to do. It's, yeah. it's fun to watch. I mean, he's he's awesome. He really is. And, he, and the same thing. He just looks like he loves the game and he's out there playing and and having fun doing it. I like his game because there's a lot of glide in his game too. Like he's not playing at 109 miles. Like when he when he has to go get a puck, he can step on it. But when he gets it, he almost slows it down a little bit and then like takes it to his pace. Where you know the big boys now, McDavid, McKinnon, they they ramp it up to their speed, their pace that people can't keep up. But he seems to have that old school slow it down and and like you said, seeing way uh, uh, two plays ahead. Yeah, big time. It's like the old the old Russian, you know, the guys like Fatisov and those guys. He just yeah. seems like he has that uh, that you know the Russian five, the, the Russian <laughs> five exactly. He seems to have that in him a little bit. You know, I'm trying to pull up the stats here. He's got like 60 more so points. Got, uh, guy or no, he's got eight more points. I think than McKinnon. No, I'm talking 10. about his team. Oh, then his team no. probably 50 points, which is pretty crazy. He's fun to watch, and you know, I, I, that's what I like. I, I don't know if I have any teams, or favorite teams. I just like watching players now. You know, yeah, he's got 123 points, and Braden Point's got 80. 
What is Stamper? Yeah, Forty three. Stamper doesn't have a contract. That's what he's got. He's got twenty nine. <laughs> he's got twenty nine goals for sixty five. It's fucking Stamper's minus twenty three. She's cool old on Tampa this year. Still thirty. Almost got thirty again. Yeah. I. It'd still be interesting to see what what happens with him too. I don't know. He's the UFA. You think? Yeah. Gonna, yeah. I don't know. How old? He? He's not that old, right? I mean, he's getting yeah, up there, uh, but just the inch more. He's probably thirty three. He was thinking he'd be older the way the, the t- tough injuries he's been through. And, yeah. And, uh, he's 34 he years forever. old, yeah. born in 90. Yep. Fucked over 1,000 games. But, uh, Berard, I saw here in your hockey DB, last thing for me, fella, is you, you played in Columbus. I, 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 did you hate it as much as this guy hates it or what? Well, I always liked it. He, I was I I in Columbus. I, I he, That's good towards the end. So I liked okay. it because at the beginning, it was before he got hurt, but, uh, you know, I obviously with Nash and Vaborny and, and, and yeah. you know, a few players. And, and you know, I got hurt. I signed a two-year deal there, and I got hurt forty games in. But I think I had like fourteen goals. Yeah, and I was kind of yeah, it was kind of had some good numbers, and I hurt my back. Um, and they kind of doctored. I had back surgery, and then they should have done two levels. And long story short, then I had Hitch with about ten games left. And Hitchcock is the biggest phony out there, and I'll say it. <laughs> I can't stand him. I've never played a sport in his life. Um, he just he shits on guys, and and uh, I honestly I, I just I never respected the man after that, and uh, I don't like him. Yeah, so that way. Yeah, the JR, the JR bagel story with Hitch, right? He rubbed yeah, those no. balls and Hitch. Had <laughs> Just, I can imagine uh, for a guy. Yeah, I got to know him three years uh, or two and a half years, but it's it's for a quick fix or someone that comes in and just tries to make a statement early. I yeah, I could see that's that. what he did. He, and then I was and you know what? back surgery. Who knows if we had a different coach? Maybe we could have won. Our team was fucking arguably one of the best teams in the league for those couple of years, and we were you know we were held back a bit. Whether that was I don't know, some personnel or fucking, you know, not finding the right... Off-ice issues. Right goals, <laughs> off-ice issues. Um, you know, but I don't know. Hitch is he's a different bird. Yeah. Different bird. Just think how long he's lasted and literally he's probably never... He's in the Hall of Fame. Never, never, yeah, exactly. He's in the Hall of Fame. Exactly. Hey, Bird, you had 32 and 44 in Columbus before you got hurt. But let, let's let's go to the other spectrum here. Fuck, what was it like playing for the Rangers? That, that I mean, that team we had was, I mean, it was Lindros, Bure, Mess, Leach, Malakoff, Theo Fleury, Casparitis. Dale Puritan, Rick Dale Purington, that guy. He came <laughs> down to Hartford. You guys came down to Hartford that year. Yeah, Ricky was there. Steve McKenna. Was that in 2002? Yeah, was, 2001, was, 2002. Yeah, that was 2001, 2002. Yeah, that was, was when I scored my first first goal. Was in, you, fuck, so that, you're in the lineup. That was your first – was that your first – that was your first game back after you getting hurt after hurting your arm. Correct. Right? Yeah, I signed with the Rangers. That was a, so right after nine eleven as well too. Oh, so that was wow. a, so my, yeah. We missed the playoffs that year, which is crazy because uh, we had a. I mean, your, Lindros, Big E. He was yeah, my, your cap was two hundred million. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You had a great year, man. You played all like look at this. I was coming off eye yeah. surgery. You played all eighty two, which is fucking amazing. It was all right, and then you had twenty two two goals, twenty three points. And you're even Steven. I mean, that's coming off what you went through, dude. That's I never knew that. Yeah, that's and 60 points was, in the modern NHL. Oh, fuck. I'll, I'll say this, and, and the Rangers were unreal, and Slats was unreal to me. There was a lot of games I probably yeah. shouldn't have been in the lineup, and he, and he gave me an opportunity. You know, I was probably six, seven defenseman, um, and he just let me kind of uh, get out all the cobwebs and stuff. And, yeah. and uh, I really Fucking still want to thank him because he, wow. he, he did a really good job. He, he I mean, good job. He just did me a favor and kept me in it, you know. Because yeah. then the next year, you know, I signed with Boston and stuff, and, and I could feel that I was starting to – you know, kind of learn the game again, how to play with one eye. Totally. So, what was it like? Like, because I mean, that's another thing about the game I hate now is these these go these D go back for pucks and they don't have to worry about getting hit. I I, I might have been a fucking wheel and deal defensive if I didn't have to worry about guys killing me. But even in your era before me, the guys on the four check were even crazier. What was it like? To, do you remember the first time you went back for a puck when you only had one eye? Where you like, well, I can't even imagine that, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. I mean, so vision was one of my. Um, you know, I, I would say one of my assets. Big yeah. Assets. So the one I – going back for the puck was all right. If one guy was chasing me, for me it was when I had two guys chasing me. I could always kind of feel the one guy, and then the second guy would jump me. That's oh. when I had trouble. A lot of the older guys, though, honestly, and I said this before, it was respect. A lot of guys would kind of give me the, hey, 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 come in. Even oh, before they gave yeah. me a little bit of hit, you know, they wouldn't just destroy oh, yeah. me. Um, but before that, I mean, you know, guys like Lindros and stuff, chasing. I said the other night with the seamless glass. I mean, we used to, we used to get our heads rang, rung off oh, yeah. <laughs> the big yeah. glass all the time, split right at, you know, right oh, at the We used yeah. a, lot, a lot of cuts. But, yeah, it's definitely a different game now for sure. That seamless glass was the worst. There was no, when rock. I first got in the league, the Calgary was bad. Fuck, I, I used to be like, I got a good hit into this fucking thing. Uh, that's where all the concussions yeah. kind of started, well, I no believe. Yeah. You know, hell yeah, for sure. So, anything else we want to touch on here, boys? Before uh, before let the beast go, or I mean, what's going on in Newport, Rhode Island? Never been there. I, 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 I Maddie's been all over me for that too. Yeah. Now, that's a fun summer. It, it is. You guys can come down too, because we'll we'll uh, see if I we'll get get us on Newport Country Club too. Great, yeah. uh, you know, great old track. 
one of the best, I think it's one, I think it's one of the oldest uh, uh, clubhouses in the U.S., I believe. And the track, I mean, it's it's special, too. So you guys get down here. It's a great summer. I mean, it's 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 a, it's a good, uh, great restaurants. Nightlife's not the best. I mean, close at one. There's only like bars and stuff. But as far as food and stuff, Newport Rhode Island's right up there. One o'clock. Well, we'll go back to fucking Maddie's house. Uh, we'll house we'll house figure it out, I'm sure. Hey, I wanted to ask you this one last thing for me. Uh, Cobble, you were one of the first guys that brought me to Cobble too, Diamante. Now, Cobble, I love this place more than anything. Do you still get down there as much as you used to? Or I, how I need to. I have not been down since COVID. I love going down. We we got to get our our matches going. I got to get swinging the club again. Yeah. We got to get our matches. Me and I'll be yeah. taking on you guys, but you and Loops. But God, I don't want Loops. I don't, I don't want Loops. Nice. I don't fucking want Loops. <laughs> loops. I'll take you after the round. But God, yeah, Diamante. They, they just broke. Uh, I believe they just broke ground on their third track too. So the building uh, Tiger designed another track that's supposed to be really really nice. Um, so hopefully uh, within a couple of years, I got to get back down there. Yeah, we got to. That, that was a trip. We, we need a trip. We need a trip. I was OG style, man. I first learned how to be a real pro with you in in Mexico. Seriously, <laughs> I swear to God, that was that's, that's that where was, you learned how to be a real. That pro. That was back when I mean that Diamante had just fucking six homes on it, no clubhouse and uh, dance and parties 18, on the green and eighteen holes night. dance parties. <laughs> The fucking little the little guys bringing us coolers of beer while we're just rolling our tits off <laughs> with fucking blazers and it was sick. oh it was fun yeah, yeah. absolutely no rules back no, then eh? no it was great no. good stuff uh, be you the man buddy we love you thanks for joining us that was missing curfew fellas thank you.